Hello and welcome to Living Life. It's great to spend some time together around God's Word. Yesterday we saw Job lament the poor friendship that Eliphaz has shown. He's unreliable and unhelpful as a friend. Today in our passage, we will see how Job continues his complaint about the present sufferings. He is in real pain. But in the midst of real pain, Job discovers an important lesson about life. And this truth is so important that all of us uh, because it pertains to our life here on earth. What is this important lesson about life that Job discovered in his suffering? Let's take a look at our passage together. Job chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. Do not mortals have hard service on earth? Are not their days like those of hired laborers, like a slave longing for the evening shadows, or a hired laborer waiting to be paid? So I have been allotted months of futility, and nights of misery have been assigned to me. When I lie down, I think, how long before I get up? The night drags on, and I toss and turn until dawn. My body is clothed with worms and scabs. My skin is broken and festering. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and they come to an end without hope. Remember, O God, that my life is but a breath. My eyes will never see happiness again. The eye that now sees me will see me no longer. You will look for me, but I will be no more. As a cloud vanishes and is gone, so one who goes down to the grave does not return. He will never come to his house again. His place will know him no more. Job's outlook in life is very fatalistic. He compares his life to hard labor that never ends. Imagine working and laboring and toiling at a difficult workplace, and you're just waiting for 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 the day to end so that you can go home. That's what life feels like for Job. Endless labor, toil, and pain with no end in sight. He also confesses his struggles with sleepless nights. He says, Nights of misery have been assigned to me. If you ever struggle with insomnia, you know how challenging it is to not be able to sleep. Job is lying down trying to sleep but cannot go to sleep. The night is dragging on and he's tossing and turning right up until the early morning. Job is also struggling with an extensive amount of physical pain. His body is clothed with worms and scabs. His skin is broken and festering. Days come and go, but there is no end in sight to his pain and suffering. There is no hope. And then Job confesses about an important truth he's learned during his suffering. He talks about the brevity and the shortness of life. Look at what he says in verse 7 and on. He says, Remember, O God, that my life is but a breath. My eyes will never see happiness again. The eye that now sees me will see me no longer. You will look for me, but I will be no more. As a cloud vanishes and is gone, so one who goes down to the grave does not return. He will never come to his house again. His place will know him no more. Life is short, like a breath. Life is like fleeting, like a cloud. The Bible shows over and over this simple truth about the brevity of life. Where I live in the United States, there was a display of white flags for hundreds of thousands of people who have lost their lives during the pandemic. So I went there a couple days ago. Imagine well over half a million small white flags all staked to the ground. As I saw an endless sea of white flags representing just how many people lost their lives within the last couple years. I thought about some of these verses from the Bible that speaks to how short and how brief our life is. Psalm 90 talks about ending our ears is like a sigh of breath. Think about how short a sigh of breath is. That's how short this life is in light of death and eternity. James 4 talks about us being like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Think about how long a vapor lasts in the air and vanishes into thin air. That's how the Bible describes the shortness and the brevity of life. You will be here for a little time and then vanish as if you never existed. 
When things are going well, we, don't, we usually don't think about how short this life is. It is so easy to grow comfortable thinking that life will go on forever indefinitely. Like in Jesus' parable in Luke 12 about a rich man who thought to himself, I'm going to tear down my barns, build bigger ones, and store all my grain and all my goods here. He talks to himself saying, you have many goods stored up here for many years. Take it easy and eat and drink and enjoy yourself. Well, this rich man and all his riches forgot the simple fact that life is truly short. And that very night he died because God demanded his life. All that he's built up his whole life, all the barns and grains and goods, he could not single, uh, take a single penny with him. You see, prosperity makes us forget this lesson about the brevity of life. But suffering teaches us an important lesson, that life is truly short. And our time here is so short that we should steward our time wisely in light of death. We are like a breath, a vapor that appear, appears for a little time and then vanishes. I remember a preacher one time brought out a visual illustration to uh, during one of his sermon, he had a very long rope with one end coming from behind the stage so you couldn't see one end. And then he was holding the other end on his hand, uh, except that the tip of that rope was color red. And so imagine a long rope and then a tip, a color, like color red, a little tip. And he said, this rope represents our whole existence. We will exist forever in eternity. And then the small red tip represents our existence on this earth. This tip represents how short our life is here. Yet most of us spend our time trying really hard to live a good life, like right at the end of the tip. We're trying to have a good retirement and live it up at the end of this tiny tip while completely ignoring the eternity that we will spend after this life. So I want to ask you, have you forgotten how short this life is? Are we found guilty neglecting the eternity while focusing, trying to live a good life, like right here in the tip? As the psalmist says in Psalm 90, teach us to number our days that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. I also don't want to assume that everyone watching knows how to have eternal life. If God was to demand your life tonight, are you ready to face Him? God is holy and just, but we have sinned against Him. God made a way for us to experience everlasting eternal life through the death and resurrection of Jesus His Son. So trust in Jesus today and you will live forever. So let's pray. Lord, teach us to number our days that we may develop a heart of wisdom. Help us to not forget this simple lesson about the brevity of life and help us to live in a way that resonates and reverberates for all, the, all of eternity, God. Help us to set our minds on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.